Hey everybody, welcome back. World War II Submarine History with Haiku. And our topic for today, uh, the Kriegstag Bucher, abbreviated as KTB and roughly translated to uh, War Diary. So this is a log that would be kept on a U-boat during a war patrol. Um, and this log would contain information uh, important to the captain, uh, including uh, combat actions. It would have information about uh, mechanical problems at sea. It would document when they dove, when they surfaced. Um, it kind of contains those things that don't really fit into something like the navigation log or the watch standing log or the engineering log. Um, the KTB at the end of a war patrol along with all of the other logs would be collected up and they would be forwarded to the flotilla commander and then the BDU um, where they would examine them and uh, use that information to improve operations in the future. So, um, so that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do it a little experimentally. Um, I'm not doing a PowerPoint presentation. This is just kind of unscripted. Hopefully I'm not going to ramble too much. Um, which I'm already doing, so let's 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 stay on point. Um, kind of what motivated this was recently in World of Warships, uh, they have a news feed, and there was an article about HMS Barham. Um, it's a British battleship that was sunk during World War II. I don't really know much about it. I didn't read the article in game, but it had been in the back of the back of my mind. So, you know, why don't we do what everybody else does, right? Let's go to Google. And let's Google HMS Barham. There it is right there. Uh, HMS Barham. Okay, this was a Queen Elizabeth class battleship built for the Royal Navy during the early 1910s. Okay, this looks like a big article. So let's kind of, let's just get to the meat here. This is the sinking. Okay, on the afternoon of 24 November 1941, God, this is annoying down here. Okay, uh, the first battle squadron, Barham, Queen Elizabeth, and Valiant, with an escort of eight destroyers, departed Alexandria to cover the 7th and 15th cruiser squadrons as they hunted for Italian convoys in the central Mediterranean. Long and the short of it, while they're on this mission, um, the U-331, commanded by Oberleutnant Zersee Hans Diedrich von Tiesenhausen, um, comes upon their convoy, and uh, a torpedo attack ensues in which the Barham is sunk uh, with great loss of life, uh, I think on the order of 862 officers and sailors. Um, when the battleship was first hit, it uh, capsized the port, and while it was on its side, there was a magazine explosion uh, about four minutes after it exploded. So it went down hard, and it went down fast, um, unfortunately. So what I'm interested to know is if there's a war patrol diary, if there's a KTB associated with this action, and we can check that. Let's go over to uboatarchive.net. But archive.net. And here we are. So the U so U-boat archive.net is maintained by Jerry Mason, who's a retired U.S. naval aviator. Um, and he flew uh, S3A and S3B Viking um, any submarine warfare uh, aircraft off of uh, aircraft carriers. So he had a long career, a lot of experience uh, in ASW. And uh, he has a real interest in the Battle of the Atlantic and, in particular, U-boats. So, one of the things he does with his website is he kind of he's kind of a repository for translated U-boat KTBs. And uh, there's a he has a lot of interesting ones in here. Um, as we're tooling through here, everybody. Every, every, like probably anybody who's into naval history in the Battle of the Atlantic and U-boats and stuff, they will understand who Gunther Preen is in the U-47. Um, 
for example, he had, okay, so here on this website, they had the key TB uh, for the patrol, which was the SCAPA flow raid, um, where the U-47 sank the, uh, was it the HMS Royal Oak? And there are other uh, interesting KTBs in here. There's one KTB that deals with the sinking of the uh, Laconia. And um, there, are, there are others. Some of these KTBs, they're kind of like really, they're really not really interesting or they're, they're really non you know, nothing happened much on those patrols. But there are other ones where there was quite a bit going on and we can learn a lot about how U-boats operated um, let's move down here. Let's look for U331. Okay, getting close. And there is, there's one KTB for the U331 on this website. And it covers the per period of 12 November 1941 to 3 December 1941. This is the third patrol in the Mediterranean for that boat. And it covers the sinking of HMS Sparum. So if we click on this, um, this comes up. We've got some preliminary information, and then we have the actual translated uh, KTB. Now you will notice here, this is the pages like there. It's a three-column format. Um, the leftmost column will have date and time information. The center column will have location and weather information generally. And then the right column will have the captain's notes, um, things of interest going on at any particular uh, point in time. So as an example, let's, let's just kind of go through this first page here. <coughs> Excuse me. I am getting over a cold and it's, man, it's rough. Um, dates are in the day, month, year format. So the first entry is from 12 to the 22nd, October 1941, the U-boats in port uh, at Salamis. And while they're there, um, there's just some general work being done on the boat at the pier. Uh, as we go down to the next entry, uh, 23 October to 31 October 1941, the boat is at uh, Piraeus, where it's in dry dock. So here um, they're doing uh, probably more, a little bit more extensive work on the boat, getting it ready for the patrol. Uh, and then by November 1st, 1941, the boat's back at Salamis. And uh, it departs on 12 November 1941 at 1800 hours on its third war patrol. The opening entry uh, after their departure is interesting, and uh, I'll just read this real quick. Uh, 12 November 1941, 1800 hours, departed from U-boat base Salamis on the third war patrol of the boat. After putting to sea, took aboard the special commando high in the strength of one officer, one sergeant, one corporal, five men. <clears throat> Carried out a preliminary exercise of the high mission. Uh, in the meantime, do a trim test. And then uh, the next couple entries deal with the boat um, leaving Salamis and uh, meeting up with an escort to uh, negotiate the uh, Piraeus minefield. So, so this is immediately interesting because we're finding out that uh, initially when they start out on this war patrol, they're carrying a uh, team of commandos that they're going to drop someplace so that they can do a mission. And uh, the first part of the KTB actually deals just with that aspect of the war patrol. We're not going to get into it because I'm trying to make sh I'm trying not to make this like a 30 or 40 minute brief. Uh, you know, my intent is just to kind of like show you how the KTB is organized and what kind of information we can get from it. <clears throat> uh, some of the other things that are interesting uh, in the KTB, it will be noted when they do dives why they did the dive when they surfaced. They will also have information on the distance they traveled on the surface and submerged. Um, they will also, in these KTBs, they'll also like note 
like mechanical problems they're having with with the boat where, the, where it's the engineer's log they would probably do that too but they're also probably doing a lot of other stuff like time and schedules when they like uh did filter changes you know s stuff like that how much oil they've added you know that helps them measure like how much you know oil the engine is burning and stuff um but here like if you'll notice here on 13 november 1941 at 1745 they do a deep dive test um to depth t equals 75 meters um forward periscope leaks more than normally despite new packing okay so that was maybe something they fixed when they were in port and they're still having problems with it um, they surface 1822 it's not noted here um, but they may have like checked the packing or tried to do something to stem that water leak going through here they describe their aircraft encounters um here this is interesting also as well on 16 november uh, 1941 at uh, 0710 they dive and they put the boat on the bottom at a depth of 19.5 meters so this was something and, and you'll notice this in the ktbs uh when they were when they were at sea and when they were in areas where the depth was suitable um during the daytime they they would just put the boats they would just let them rest on the bottom and they would just they would just wait for nightfall when they would surface and then they would continue back uh on their you know on their mission and you, you have to think about it this way um they can only you know you can only if, if your intention is to stay underwater during daylight and let's say it's summer and you've got 12 hours of daylight maybe even a little bit more you could you can move it two knots while you're underwater on you know you can just you know run your e-motors at two knots and in 12 hours you can make 24 knots and you can run your battery down to like 50 percent or something okay or um you could just rest on the bottom not run your e-motors and just use enough electricity to keep your vital systems going on the boat that would really conserve your battery um and you know you really wouldn't be losing you wouldn't i mean you really wouldn't be losing much because you're only going because when you're underwater you know you're only going like 16 20 24 nautical miles anyways you're not going that far so you can just rest on the bottom wait for you know wait for dusk come back up and then just uh you know cruise at high speed on the surface um and this is something you might you know you might read about this in a book where you know in a book about a u-boat you know the author mentions oh you know they they just rested on the bottom and you know you might not really think too much of it but what you know doing something like diving a little deeper going through these documents you see that oh yeah okay this is actually a thing that they did and it wasn't just once in a while you know really the only time you wouldn't do it is if you were going across the atlantic to the u.s obviously you're not going to have any place in between to like really rest on the bottom but you would on the eastern seaboard and they did do that they would just sit on the bottom and they would just kind of chill wait for nightfall come up and just torpedo the crap out of everything they saw um okay now here we are let's see here 16 november 1941 we're interested in 25 november 1941 so here's the 17th here's the 18th um yeah like i said this this first part of this is just with that commando mission um and, and we'll we'll circle up and, and, and we'll come back to that in a minute here okay 24 november right 25 november okay so on 25 november uh like 14 30 hours this is when u331 picks up that convoy of the three battleships uh and he knows that 1500 three battleships bearing 15 degrees 
at 10 to 11 nautical miles on southerly course. Okay, uh, at 1547 uh, action stations, Captain notes that now or never opportunity has come. Two of the destroyers move forward to take positions ahead of and just to port of the battleships. Apparently the destroyer formation is a screen against torpedo planes. I succeed in passing unseen between these two destroyers at periscope depth. Distance to each 250 meters, and uh, I don't. I think, I think I may have talked about this before, but um, this is daylight, so this is so they're conducting a submerged attack. But you, you know, usually you would do a night attack, and you would be uh, less than a thousand meters, and oftentimes you you would be around two to three hundred meters when you attacked. So. They're kind of getting, they're right in that sweet spot. Um, okay, he also notes, I can no longer reach shooting positions on the first battleship due to the difficult target angle. Therefore, onto the second battleship. Okay, type not recognized. I must turn towards hard. Shot despite the difficult target angle. I have the sun at my back. So four fan uh, torpedo spread on battleship range 375 meters. Uh, estimated running time 24 seconds. Okay, depths, torpedo tube one, three meters, tube three, four meters, tube two, five meters, tube four, four meters, target angle 70 degrees, torpedo course 295. Um, so what's interesting about this is they, they must be using contact pistols on the torpedoes. I don't remember around the time when the Germans fixed the problems they had um, with the magnetic pistols. At this point in 1941, uh, it may still have been a significant problem. I don't remember. I don't have a photographic memory. I always got to go back and look this stuff up. Uh, but in my book, this was the smart way to do it. Just contact pistols, keep the torpedoes shallow enough that you know they're going to hit, and just kind of like spread them out just so you get good impacts and, uh, you know, make the biggest hole possible you can. So um, after 24 seconds running time, fouled at the shot interval, three bright detonations, somewhat later, one more. By sound bearings, the torpedoes ran together with the battleship sounds after the detonations cracking sounds which suggest bulkheads are breaking so after this attack they have to uh, they have to they have to maneuver in order to avoid hitting anybody and um, when they when they do that the conning tower broaches and they're spotted um, they even they have to dive and the dive goes a little sideways they get pretty deep <clears throat> but they are able to they are they are able to regain control of the boat and control um, now and they actually and they actually talk about they actually talk about it here in the rush of the four valves lo located awkwardly the wrong one was turned off in any case when the supply lines are open to the large depth gauge and the ballast tank pressure gauges, the pointers register at full scale. From their position, the boat is actually at a depth of 130 meters. Okay. Blew immediately and, and pumped. And finally, the pointer is steady. The pointer trembles. The boat comes up. So this is the kind of information they have in here. Um, and it's it's really interesting. You know, he does note that there are some, um, there are some depth charges dropped, but they're not really near where they are. So... The destroyers never really, never really locate them. So they pulled off a great success. Um, and then there's some information about radio traffic back and forth in conjunction with the attack. And then, um, and then they proceed on. And the boat ends up returning back to port to Salamis on December 3rd, I think. Yeah. And that's it. Some of the, you know, final entry uh, taken in convoy by escort vessel 12 Victor 9 for training past 
Anega minefield, pass Piraeus minefield, made fast Salamis base. Um, 3 December 1941 at 1130 hours. Now, the reason actually I picked this KTB and um, this mission was that there's something else here. And there's something else that uboatarchive.net does is they maintain um, documents about captures and interrogations of U-boats. Uh, and if we click on the individual U-boats, we can come down here and we can find an entry for the U-331. Uh, sunk by Hudson Aircraft of 500 Squadron and an Albacore of 820 Squadron from HMS Formidable, November 17, 1942. So this happens almost a year after they sink HMS Barm. But if we click on this, um, this is a, this is an interrogation report um, that was, wait, is this the right one? June 1943. No, this is, no, this isn't it. I got the one. Here it is right here. U331. Yeah, here we go. Okay, report on interrogation of survivors from U331, a 500-ton U-boat sunk at about 1430 on 17 November 1942. I'm not going to read through this um, because this is a pretty lengthy document. Some of the things I want to mention, though, is that uh, it was as a result of this interrogation, we find out what that commando mission was and uh, what happened with all that. Um the way this interrogation report is organized, there are some introductory remarks by the interrogators. Um, there's like a detailed analysis of the submarine itself, uh, which we can get a lot of good, interesting information of. And then um, there'll be a discussion of the last patrol where the boat was sunk and the crew was captured. Um, and then as we move through it, there will be, um, there'll be like summary information probably for higher ups that uh, give them a picture of how the war is going at that point in time. So there will be, there's information here on like what the basis the Germans were using, how many boats they had, what boats they were. This is all the information that they're getting out of the uh, interrogations. And, um, you know, it kind of winds up with a uh, early history of the U-331, and this is information they would have gotten from the captain during the interrogation and stuff. And, and it's actually at this point, well, Tiesenhausen, no, because it would the you know when Barham was sunk, that was really really sensitive, and the British did not want that information to get out. So it was quite a while before Tiesenhausen even knew that he they had sunk Barham. Uh, but they go over that here in this interrogation. And then, you know, at the end of the report, um, there is, you know, in information on the the actual, the, the U-boat crew. And um, this is really good. This is really interesting reading. You can learn quite a bit. Uh, and then there will actually be a roster of the crew and stuff. So... So that's it. This was actually, man, this is still long. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I encourage you to head over to the uboatarchive.net website. Take a look through some of these war diaries and see what you can learn. Uh, it's really interesting and it gives you just another, it just adds to, um, it adds to the story and the, and the history. And that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the briefing and we'll come back again. Feel free to contact me via email. I am on Discord, Twitter, and I do have a Patreon. Thanks to USNI for doing the job they do so well. Their publishing arm is an invaluable resource to the preservation of naval history. Consider becoming a member so their work can continue long into the future. Till next time, peace out.